it's kind of a strange time, but since I have the day off, um, I found out this new little rigging uh, tr trick that I want to share with the Blender community. Uh, since it's you know mega extremely hot outside, I don't really want to go out right now. So, um, so I'm going to show you how to create a tentacle and how to rig it with uh, something called Spline IK. It's a uh, Pretty simple to do. There's a few steps involved, but each step is not very complex. So let's create a simple tentacle. And oh, you know what? Let me turn on my screencast keys here so you can see what I'm doing. Move the uh, cursor back to the center and let's create a tentacle. Okay, let's go to mesh and create a cylinder. Oops, yeah, there we go. Move this up. Make sure your tool toolbox is open with the T key so that you can see what you're doing. I'm going to turn the uh, number of vertices on this thing down, and I'm going to turn the cap fill type to none, nothing, so that I have no caps. All right, and I'm going to move this up a bit. It's kind of in the center. Oops. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, stretch it out. Make a long, thin tentacle here. Okay, now that we have kind of a, a basic tentacle shape, let's uh, create some segments so we can, um, you know, deform it nicely. Control R, and just spin the mouse wheel up and down. Okay, so we got some segments. I'm going to add one more ring of segments at the top, because the tip is going to need to taper off uh, more dramatically. Okay, so now I'm going to close the uh, loop at the top here, so I'll just hold down Option and right-click on a vertex, and that selects them all, and then Option M. Uh, to merge everything, I'll merge it at the center. Okay, move that up a little bit. Okay, let's give it some uh, subdivision surfaces so that it's smooth. Smooth it out. Okay, so in the view, I'll just have it set to one. Uh, and then over here in my toolbox under shading, I'll set smooth so we can get a better idea of what it looks like. Okay, now let's, um, well, the tentacle is not really tapered at this moment, so let's go ahead and turn on our proportional um, editing here, enable that, and then when I hit the S key to scale, you'll see that the circle shows up, the white circle that shows you uh, the area of influence of your proportional editing, so if I spin my mouse wheel down towards me, it just increases that, okay, so now I'll, I'll scale it with S, okay, so you can see that that's how it works, okay. All right, I'm going to turn that off temporarily. Let me just grab this top part here and kind of stretch it out just a little bit more. Okay, so now we have a very basic uh, tentacle shape. All right. Okay, so let's create an armature to control this tentacle. Move this light out of the way. All right, and uh, shift A, and we'll create an armature uh, type of single bone. Move this little guy into place <clears throat> in the middle of the tentacle. But now we can't see it, so let's go ahead and on the bone uh, armature tab, turn on x-ray under display. Okay, let me go to the top view and make sure that the armature is kind of sitting in the middle of the tentacle. Okay, tab into edit mode, uh, grab the tip of the bone and just drag it up until it is as tall as the tentacle. Okay. Now I'll, right, I'll select the body of the bone and hit W to subdivide. And then with my toolbox open, before I take any other actions, uh, I can change the number of cuts. So I'll change it to four. Okay. Okay. So we're still in edit mode, and um, we can do this kind of thing with the regular, uh, you know, uh, display type of octahedral. But if we switch to B bone, okay, and we start selecting these bones. If we go into the bone uh, tab itself under the deform tab, uh, we have um, this thing called segments, which uh, becomes available when you enable the B bones. Okay, so this is going to give you more of a curved kind of deformation to the bone. So we want to turn this on. Uh, one thing is you won't really see the segments here when you're editing them. You have to actually go into uh, pose mode in order to see the actual segments, which is kind of a, a problem, but. Okay, so I'm going to turn the middle bones to three segments, and I'm going to turn the 
kind of the tip and the root bones to um, two segments. And the reason why I don't make them all three segments, let me show you the effect of the B bones. You can see that when you move the B bones, it actually kind of deforms, it, it creates a, a curve to the uh, bones around it. So the bone beneath the one that's selected is curving. So if you have too many uh, segments, it will curve too much. And if you don't have enough, it will curve, you know, it won't curve as much. So I don't want the tip to be as springy. Same thing with the base. I want that to be kind of like, uh, you know, uh, more stable. All right, so let's go back into our object mode. And then let's go ahead and select the uh, a tentacle object and then shift select the uh, uh, armature and parent the tentacle to the armature with automatic weights selected. Okay, so let's test out. Oh, I'm in weight paint mode. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay, so let's just test this. Make sure that, yes, it is indeed uh, deforming correctly. Okay, no problem there. Don't have to do any cleanup at all. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. Okay, so um, we're still in pose mode. That's good. I'll select this tip bone. Okay, uh, now let's create a curve that's going to control this uh, armature. So let's go in to curve and add Bezier curve. And let me uh, rotate this over. Okay, so if I tab into the curve to edit it, um, you can see here in Blender that... Uh, Blender curves show little arrows that show you which direction the curve is running, which is a nice feature. So we can see here that the curve is running the opposite direction we want because we want the curve to be running in the same direction as uh, the, the tentacle. So let's just go back into the regular mode and hit R180. And I'll flip it over. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to edit the curve so that it's basically the same shape as, as not the entire tentacle object, but the bones that we want to control. So we're only, only going to control, in this case, I want this last bone here, this kind of root bone of the tentacle. I want that to kind of remain stable. So I'm going to only have this, uh, this curve deform control the first four bones in the tentacle. So let's just move it up so that it is about the same shape as that. And just move these handles over to kind of straighten this curve out. Okay, not bad. So let's move the curve into, like right in the middle of the uh, armature here. Make sure it's it's in there pretty good. So when it starts taking over, it's gonna move the bones to it. So we want it to kind of be in the same spot as the bones were in. Okay, so now with the top uh, bone of our chain selected, let's go to the bone constraints panel here. Remember, we're in pose mode right now. And under Add Constraint, let's say Spline IK, and then we'll choose that curve. Okay, now it looks really strange because we have to select the chain length. In this case, we're uh, controlling four bones with this thing. All right, so chain length of four. So you're gonna see that something strange will probably happen at this point. Like, for example, the bones kind of disconnect from the uh, other thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select that curve and move it back into place. And I want the curve to be part of the armature so that it's moving with the kind of the root bone here. So with that set, curve selected, I'm going to shift select the root bone and I'm going to parent it and choose bone when you do this. Okay. So now the curve is parented. Uh, let's find it here. This is the organizer window if, in case you were wondering. Okay. So now we can find that curve. Now if I move that curve around. Okay. There in there it's deforming the uh, it is the curve at this point is in fact taking over and deforming the bones so you can see that there well you know there's one thing I forgot to do let's go ahead and because there's only two uh, points controlling this curve at this mo at this moment so that's not nearly enough you're not going to get any kind of movement here because there's only a control at the bottom and top of the curve so let's select everything on the curve and hit W to subdivide the curve and with the toolbox, I'll give it three, okay? Number of cuts, I have one at the top. Okay, so now when we select, oops, excuse me. One thing is it's kind of hard to uh, find 
the actual control points when you're selecting them. I wish Blender had a, more of a visual cue because it's hard to say, especially when, when a curve is kind of straight like this, it's kind of difficult to see sometimes if you're selecting the actual control point or the handles. So you want to select the control point. So you can see that the uh, control points are in fact moving. All right. Okay, so they're they're they are controlling the uh, the uh, armature at this point. So the the one thing is we're not really done yet because there's one more thing we got to do. This is a little bit kind of too difficult to um, animate. You can in Blender animate just about anything. You could set keyframes for these individual points, but uh, that's kind of hassle. So let's do something. Create something called a hook. So select the I'm gonna select the top control point here of the curve and Control H. Oops. Control H and hook to new object. Now, supposedly you can hook to a selected bone or selected object. I haven't been able to get that to work. Um, once I select the object, I, I try to select the uh, uh, curve. Uh, I lose the selection of the object and gives me an error. So I'm just going to say hook to new object and creates an empty object. All right. So now this empty object, uh, once we're done editing the curve here, this empty object is going to control that curve point. All right. So let's go through and select each curve point and create a hook for it. I think there's one down here. Is this? That is. There is a control point. Continue object. Like I said, these control points can be kind of hard to see. Continue object. Okay, so we can tab out of edit mode. And now we have these control objects. And so by moving these objects around, we you know so now it's much easier to animate these objects because objects and bones will show up in the action editor, whereas the um, the keyframes for the individual control points are in their kind of own folder in the action editor. It's just easier to get to. So if you want everything to be controlled by armature, just add armature bones here, like empty you know, bones that uh, to add bones to the armature with the deformation uh, tag turned off. You know, if you add new bones and you turn off deform, they can be just kind of bones that control things. And then you could parent these little empty objects to those bones if you if you were unsuccessful in actually uh, creating hooks out of bones themselves. That's what I would just end up doing. If you don't like the look of these, if, if these kind of uh, empty objects are hard to see, just uh, click on the uh, empty object data here, and you can change the type. You could change it to example for to sphere, and you could change the size of it. So you can turn them into anything you want. Cube, for example. Okay. So let's go over, um, let me turn on uh, Translate and Rotate. And let's just start playing around with this. So you can see here in, you know, no time at all, we've got a you know, fairly complex rig here that we can do a ton of stuff with. And we didn't really have to do much of anything. Once you've done this once or twice, it becomes really, uh, really pretty easy. And also, what's nice is you can rotate these control objects. And as you can see here, you get like a lot of different kind of types of movements that you can do. You can twist, you can roll around. The only object, um, the blue axis doesn't really do that much, but uh, so you can see here how you can easily start creating. Uh, some really interesting movement. Let's say you were animating like a serpentine creature. <clears throat> you could easily start, uh, you can see here in just a few seconds, I've already started to um, create like a, uh, like a monstrous uh, kind of striking pose. All right. Easily, easily did that with, with really not a lot of effort on our part. So that is one of the really ni nice things about the Spline IK system. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. So um, it's not difficult to set up. Uh, you know, it took me a long time because I'm showing you everything step by step. But once you've figured out how to do it, um, you can do this within like literally 10 minutes or something. And you have this really complex rig that, uh, like, a, you, like I've shown you, you can, you can really control this on a lot of axes with just a few little simple control objects. So it's uh, another amazing, cool uh, rigging feature inside of Blender. So I hope that helps you out with your uh, animation.